Welcome to Reading the Word with Luther for April 19th. I want to read to you today from 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. I'm reading from the Revised Standard Version of the Holy Bible. As each one has received a gift, employ it for one another as good stewards of God's very grace. Whoever speaks as one who utters oracles of God, whoever renders service as one who renders it by the strength which God supplies in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of God. Luther writes about that word saying, It is necessary that both preachers and hearers take heed to doctrine and have clear, unmistakable evidence that what they embrace is really the true word of God, revealed from heaven. The doctrine given to the holy and primitive fathers, prophets, and apostles, the doctrine Christ himself confirmed and commanded to be taught. We are not permitted to employ the teachings dictated by any man's pleasure or fancy. We are not allowed to adapt the word to mere human knowledge and reason. We are not to trifle with the scriptures, to juggle with the word of God as if it would admit of being explained to suit the people, of being twisted distended and patched to effect peace and agreement among men. There would then be no sure permanent foundation whereon the conscience might rely. Still, it is not enough that the office and commandment be God appointed. We ministers should be conscious, and the people should be taught, that efficacy of office is not of human effort, but it is God's power and work. That which the office was designed to accomplish is not effective by virtue of our speech or action but by virtue of God's commandment and appointment. It is he who orders and himself will effectively operate through that office which is obedient to his command. In baptism, the Lord's Supper, and absolution, we are not to be concerned about the person administering the sacraments or pronouncing the absolution. Who he is, how righteous, how holy, how worthy, worthiness or unworthiness of either administering or receiving hand affects nothing. All the virtue lies in God's command and ordinance. The motive for all Christian effort is named in the words that in all things God may be glorified. No one may seek or ascribe to himself power and honor because of his office or gifts. Power and glory belongs only to God. God himself calls his church, rules, sanctifies, and preserves it through his word and spirit. To this end he bestows on us his gifts. All is done purely of grace, wholly for the sake of his beloved Son, Christ the Lord. Therefore, in return for the favor and ineffable goodness bestowed upon us, regardless of our merits, we ought to thank and praise God, directing all our efforts to the recognition and the glory of his name. Well, we are concerned about how good our pastors are, and I suppose we should be. Um, how pious they are or whatever. Um, but when it comes to the sacraments, when it comes to the word, um, that's all in God's court. Uh, it's still effective, no matter uh, the pastor. So, for example, if uh, I baptize someone or uh, pronounce the Lord's grace upon them, as the office of the keys dictates, or if I um, serve them the bread and the wine, and then later you find out that I'm um, this horrible person, I'm a um, murderer or something, um, that doesn't make um, what was done through me by God any less effective. It is just as effective because it is the word that accomplishes this. It is God working through his word and his spirit. It's not me. It's not any pastor. So you should be aware of this. You should uh, take this into consideration when you uh, go forward to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion, for example. You should be fully aware that it is God whom you are meeting there, not me. Let's pray. Give you thanks, Lord, for your word, that it is powerful and effective, even for us. We thank you that you have given us uh, this uh, office to, uh, to call and to um, 
be careful about, but we want to be more careful about putting our complete trust in you, not in our ability to call, not in the abilities of our pastors, but in your word. For that, we give you thanks through Jesus Christ, that he may be glorified and his Father. Amen. Thanks for joining me for today for this little bit of the Word and Luther's reflections upon it. I, again, want to invite you to be with us in worship at St. Paul's Lutheran Church, where I'm the pastor in Salisbury, North Carolina. Uh, right after this, there'll be a little slide coming up with the address and the time. And I hope to see you there sometime that we might uh, meet and uh, that we might worship the Lord together. Thanks for being with me today. I hope you'll be back with me again tomorrow.